the Buffer School presentation, day one. Okay. Um, if you all need a copy of the um, who's presenting, um, there should be kind of peach orange copies around. Um, we're super excited to have these two present today. And we've got a lot of really interesting stuff related to lots of different topics. And our first topic is going to be Jenna Faulkner, right? With um, um, being globally accurate. Okay. All right, so good morning, everyone. I'm Jenna Faulkner, and today I will be talking about what it's like to think globally and act locally. So ever since I was a, so when I was a small kid, I loved mud. Like there's just something about it that spoke to my soul. So this is a picture of Alden Carter and I 17 years ago in her backyard playing in the mud. And I like to think that my love for the environment stemmed from this weird obsession with mud and has become one of the defining uh, characteristics of my personality today. I love studying the environment so much that when it came time to pick a theme for my BRVGS senior project, it wasn't even a question what I wanted it to be. And so I immediately started reaching out to different organizations and secured a summer internship with the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. And so my main intern advisor, Brenda Altmeyer, you can see her in the green, um, she was very helpful with me when it came to scheduling. And unfortunately, side note, Brenda and I don't have any pictures together because the pictures that we did have together were on a phone of mine that got crushed several weeks later and my eye cloud was full and none of the pictures backed up. So she was kind enough to take pictures of me as well and share them with me. So those will be the pictures that you see uh, later in this presentation. Um, but when I went into my internship, I knew nothing except that it was going to take 10 hours. So I probably wanted to pack a lunch. And the meet name of the meeting that I was going to be sitting in on was diving with a purpose. But otherwise, I had no idea what to expect. And this was not what I expected. So diving with a purpose apparently is all about maritime archaeology, which is mapping underwater shipwrecks. And so I sat in on their um, prep and technique uh, meeting before they went out into the field to start mapping the USS Acorn, which is um, which has been wrecked on Elbow Reef. And so I, uh, I got to sit in on how they take their measurements and um, like what they're doing right now with their baseline that goes down the middle of the wreck and how to make reference points and all that really interesting stuff. And my internship was supposed to only last uh, for the day, but by the end of the day, they opened up the opportunity for me to go out snorkeling alongside them since the wreck was only 15 feet down. And um, so I could observe them as they were doing their field work. And so I jumped at the opportunity and I would have loved to have gone, except that the day I was supposed to go, it started thunderstorming and the swells were too big and the currents were too strong. And it was just too dangerous to put people in the field. And because of scheduling problems with my family vacation, I wasn't able to go with them, unfortunately. But I did get to practice the techniques that I learned in the meeting on this mock dry wreck, which you can see right here. Here's the baseline that you can see in the other picture. And these were the significant artifacts that they wanted us to practice measuring. And so I, had, I got to practice what it was like to take measurements and communicate with my partner non-verbally, since theoretically we were supposed to be underwater. And this is a picture of me and my other intern advisor, Mr. John Cachinego, um, uh, taking our measurements that we took and drawing them to on a to uh, drawing them to scale uh, for the shipwreck that we were mapping. And then this is another picture of me talking to the DWP team about who I was, where I was from, and what I hope to gain from the experience. And so at the end of the day, I was talking to Brenda, and I asked her why. DWP only got together once a year for a couple weeks to map all these wrecks since they were all very clearly passionate about what they were doing. And she said the main reason was they didn't get to do as much as what they wanted was because of funding problems. And she uh, the uh, hypothesized that it was because there wasn't a lot of public awareness in the community about what DWP was all about. And she believed that um, they needed to get younger kids involved with local programs uh, so DWP in the future wouldn't have problems like this. So I thought that was a really interesting theory and I decided to take it, uh, use it in my community service where I got to work with this wonderful team at the St. Joseph Roman Catholic School of Cotton Tree Village, Cayo, Belize. And so for two weeks, I worked with... Um, 
I worked at a summer, I volunteered at a summer program and we taught a curriculum, it was this book, um, and it was all focused around character development and environmental protection. So I started getting the conversation going. And this is what some of the younger classrooms look like, but I worked in the older classrooms like this. And notice how nobody was in the back row. Everybody was up front and in the action and they wanted to be engaged with us. And this is what my classroom looked like. And for my class, we had um, every day, we had a different discussion question. And it would be something like, how can you be the best version of yourself? Or why do you think we need to keep our environment clean and healthy? And every student in the room, we would write it up on the board, and every student in the room would write their ideas up on the board around it, and we would create a flow chart um, about all these ideas. And these are the lesson plans that we have, and you can see our discussion questions. And throughout the day, we would do um, activities in the book that tied back into that uh, bigger theme. And so the program that I went to Belize through, Global Leadership Adventures, they thought that was a really cool idea when we told them about it. So for my legacy, um, Global Leadership Adventures saved the lesson plans that me and my team wrote, and um, they will be using them to help influence future projects, like um, future projects uh, similar to the one that in Belize for students like me who are going to be teaching classes that have never taught classes before. So my legacy will be uh, influencing children in South Africa, Argentina, Thailand, and Costa Rica for like seasons to come. And I think that is just really, really cool because they uh, GLA decided to save the lesson plans that me and my team wrote. And so what I didn't expect to get from my community service was this deep connection that I felt with the kids. For example, these are two of my favorite troublemakers, George and Caesar. And then this is a picture of what our classroom typically looked like by the end of the day because I taught them how to play BS and they, ate it up. They, they became weirdly obsessed with that game. And so when I started reflecting on my internship in my community service for my research question, I realized I had this deep connection with Cotton Tree Village. And I thought to myself, if more people felt this way, then maybe projects like DWP wouldn't have as, much, uh, wouldn't have as many problems uh, with funding and support. So that led me to uh, research whether or not community service is the most effective way to incite significant improvements to local environmental health. And what I found in my research was something really amazing. When we interact with the world around us, we develop these deep personal connections like the one I had in Belize. And these connections significantly increase our likelihood to alter our lifestyle habits and lead more environmentally conscientious lives. And they also increase our likelihood to become involved in programs like DWP. So with my research, I was able to connect all the dots between my internship and my community service that would have otherwise been invisible to me. And uh, I understand now that how we conduct ourselves in the world can alter our beliefs and our perspectives. And, um, even influence like the hobbies that we gravitate towards and how we decide to fill our time. And I would love to talk about my project in greater detail when I have more time to do so. So could, if people could please ask me questions about it, I would greatly appreciate it. And so finally, for my advice to all the younger Governor School uh, students in the audience, I'm telling you now, make a list. Make a list of everywhere you can see yourself possibly interning, maybe even if you're on the fence, add it to the list and reach out to everyone all at once because don't just apply to one and wait to hear back from them because it's gonna leave you scrambling for an internship at the very possible last minute. So if you just reach out to a whole bunch of people all at once, it'll save you a lot of stress in the future and you'll maybe even have like different from and you can pick your best option. And finally, for my future plans, I will be attending the University of North Carolina Wilmington, where I intend to major in marine biology and minor in Spanish. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Any questions? <laughs> Howie, I know you're thinking. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, I mean, now that I know where your future plans lie, um, <laughs> how did you feel as far as the experience, especially with the children in contrast with in the field, in the Florida Keys? Where do you see yourself down the road as far as? Okay, so um, I 
was really hesitant to go into my community service because I don't really like working with kids that much. <laughs> like um, I coach, but by the end of like the swim lesson, I'm ready to be done with them. So I uh, was really surprised by how I felt about the kids. After two weeks, I felt really connected to them and it was really hard to say goodbye. And I really, they were my friends. But um, working in the field was just so cool. Like taking all the measurements um, on the mock dry wreck and then using those measurements to make a representation of the ship, like to scale, like accurate, not just eyeballing it. It was so satisfying. And I was so proud of my little piece of uh, grid paper that just had a line down the middle and like three different rectangles. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect compared to what's outside. So even though I really enjoyed the kids, I definitely see myself working in the field with what I want to do with my future. But maybe I'll work with kids a little bit, but I definitely want to work with I definitely want to work in the field and not have to worry about children for the most part. <laughs> so the, the premise is that the, that's one of the best ways to get, you know, these projects and mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So in a in a time where it seems that like service is harder and harder to in and invested in, mm -hmm. um, how do you think the best way to kind of get that outreach going or, or get that, um, you know, before the ball is in precedent? Definitely, I think, um, the community service programs themselves, like people should advertise like, oh, we're looking for students. Um, there's, for example, there's um, an organization uh, just up the street in the town of Orange called Stream Sweepers, and they remove, um, big tractor tires and garbage from tributaries to the Chesapeake Bay. And they reach out to students specifically in Orange County and then a little bit in surrounding counties, but they love getting kids from Orange County. And um, they take them and they train them for the season and at the beginning of the summer. And then for the rest of the summer, they go out and remove garbage from these uh, tributaries. And so I think that what they do with reaching out to people, because it's kind of hard for kids our age to like go looking for it just like it's hard to find motivation to do stuff over the summer but if people go looking for them and you make that connection then you get excited about it and you're more likely to become involved with it and then continue that habit later in your life so I think programs should start like programs do already but programs should definitely reach out when they're looking for people because they're always going to be people who are looking for something to do with their time I hope that answered your question. <laughs> DWP is okay. diving with a purpose. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I said it in the beginning, but I didn't refer. I referred back to it as DWP, sorry. <laughs> Okay, gotcha. Uh, is that it? Okay. Um, it's clear that you're very passionate about this. Um, <laughs> what would your suggestion be to get more of this particular Orange County involved in thinking about our environment more and connecting to our own community? You, you went outside of our community. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see within this community? Well, definitely a good place to start is school because all people have to go to school. And so I think that um, specifically with the environment for community service, um, like near the end of the year after SOLs or after AP exams, um, science teachers, I think it would be really interesting if science teachers could start doing projects, not just about like do a presentation about like your favorite organism or something like that, but like um, let's uh, start, let's go work on a garden outside or let's work on, let's go fix up the garden that was made by last year's class and just getting involved in going outside and seeing all like, you learn about photosynthesis, you learn about the carbon cycle and then just going outside and seeing it all in like real world time. I think that would be really cool in getting people involved. Cause if you go out in a community and actually physically work with your hands, then you're more likely to develop that personal connection. All right. <laughs> uh, give the clicker to Caroline. Okay. <laughs>